Uh, hi there, thank you for watching. Uh, today I'm going to do some quick hydrological analysis. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to derive some uh, hydrological features like the basins and watershed. Uh, basically, what the basin is is just a delineation between the ridge lines in your study area. So, of course, what layer you will need for this analysis would be a digital elevation model, which I do have mine, uh, an SRTM. 90 meter resolution uh, it's freely available for you to download on the RSRTM website and from that I hydrologically corrected it of course so that I can be able to perform analysis on it uh, if you really don't know how to correct your digital elevation models there is a video and I'll put the link down in the comments for you to watch how I was able to correct a digital elevation model and derive these other layers like the flow direction and the flow accumulation raster so if you haven't learned how to do that you can just watch uh, the link below uh, so in order to run the two uh, tools I'll be using today which is the basins and the watershed tool uh, we'll need to derive all these layers I just mentioned the flow direction and the flow accumulation and you all derive this from the digital elevation model itself uh, the first tool I'm going to be using will be the basins tool and what the basin do like I said earlier is just to delineate around ridge lines so you can be able to have uh, sub basins within your watershed and you can be able to see which uh, sub areas accumulate water before it flows down to the whole catchment uh, so uh, what you need to do first is to make sure you do have your spatial analyst extension tandem you can get that from the customized extensions and I do have mine activated already it's your special analyst you should check the box if you don't have yours checked uh, and after that what I like to do is use the search bar it's much more friendly and easier to use I can just search for the tool I want to use which is basin and um, here's the basin tool when you click on that it brings up this interface and what it needs is the flow direction raster and with the flow direction raster you can be able to uh, delineate all the basins within my surface area I'm just let, gonna let it go to the default geodatabase and rename it to basins and then I click on OK hopefully it shouldn't take too long to run and um, we're just gonna wait and see so like I said, uh, all of this type, uh, kind of hydrological features can be used in different applications like uh, water utility, water resource management and other things like that and other kind of modeling actually uh, like flood risk modeling and stuff like that and here we go we do have the basins color coded in the default color ramp uh, I will just invoke the symbology layer by double clicking on the basins and go to the symbology tab and change it to a much more nice looking color so we can be able to differentiate between the basins within uh, the surface area so all these are basins uh, the holds water for some time before it flows down to the final uh, watershed catchment so all of these are basins and you can use this to determine how much water has been uh, accumulated within each basin and uh, like I said this can be used in several set of models and that's it for the basins uh, the next thing I want to show you guys within this video is how to delineate a watershed or a catchment area uh, there are some few steps to go through before you can do this first of all you need to let me just take this off you will need to uh, assign a pore point and the pore point needs to be in your outlet your outlet here means the area or the pixel that accumulates all the water within your surface area or within your study area you're looking at and what this tool should do is to delineate all the surface area that uh, that contributes water to that pixel and uh, here is the watershed tool but before I do that I will need to create a new shape file that's going to be my core point so I'm just going to go into this folder and right click and go to new and go to shape file I'm just going to rename it to P point and uh, leave the future type to point and change the coordinates to the world marketer WGS 1984 and click OK and now I should have a shape file of a, of a point which is empty for now in order to locate the pixel with the highest accumulation value of water 
uh, here it says it's 1.8 million and uh, from the color coding it tells me that the white area the whitish area are the areas with the possible highest pixel values so uh, I know the water flows this way I can just go to the last pixel we should probably be the pixel with the highest value because all these pixels flow into this pixel so what I want to do here is to create a point on this pixel and tell the watershed tool that I want you to create a boundary of the catchment area that contributes this particular pixel before I do that I need to invoke the editor toolbar you can get it here if it's not there you can just right click on the space here and editor I do have mine docked here and I'm just going to start editing select key point OK and um, I should click on the create features here and it brings up this create feature tab here click on P point and click on the construction tool as points just going to close this to get more space and I'm going to put it on this pixel and now I do have my pole point on the pixel with the highest accumulation value I can just stop edit it's going to ask the save I'll click on yes and now I'm ready to run the watershed tool and this is the watershed tool it requires two layers one is going to be the power point the power point which I'm going to put in here and the other one is going to be of course the flow direction which I'm going to put here and I'm just going to let it go to the default geodatabase and I'm going to just rename it to watershed and I'm just going to click OK and hopefully it shouldn't take too long to run and what this is going to do it's going to bring up a new raster file that's delineating the whole area or the whole catchment area that's contributing to this what to this particular pole point we just defined and again like I said this uh, can now be used to narrow down your case study to a particular watershed or a catchment or for people who model uh, flooding can use this uh, in terms of determining uh, if actually watershed catchments are one of the contributing factors to flood into a particular area so you can do all sort of stuff with, uh, with something like this so this is my beautifully delineated watershed uh, you could do all sort of stuff like this you could uh, change it uh, you could convert this raster data to a shape file so they can calculate the total area of this catchment area and that's it for this video Thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked it and if you do please hit the like button below, thank you.